Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And I believe that the very best way to start our day is by spending a little time with God in prayer and in the reading of His Word, studying it together. And so what we try to do here every day on First Five is we read one chapter of Scripture together. And most recently, we have begun reading in Paul's letter to the Philippians. And so today we're going to continue that by looking at Philippians chapter 2. And so my invitation to you would be that when we're all done the lesson, you would take a moment and read the whole of Philippians chapter 2. The chapters in Philippians are fairly short, pretty quick read, but really impactful. Just a great book that I think you'll really enjoy. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 18. So... If you have a Bible, want to grab that, or if you want to Google it or pull it up on a phone Bible app or something like that, I invite you to join me in Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and corrupt generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And so you too should be glad and rejoice. This whole chapter is greatly about the attitude of our hearts. In the first section, he talks about humility. He uses Jesus as sort of the ultimate example. He who was God himself, humbled himself to become a man in the flesh and allowed himself to face a criminal's death upon the cross. Then in this next section, he says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He's talking there about the work of sanctification, that, that ongoing process of growing in our faith to become more and more like Christ. And then he says something curious. <coughs> he says, do it with fear and trembling. What do you suppose that means? Why does he say that our journey of sanctification, that working out of our faith should be done with fear and trembling? I think what he is trying to impress upon his reader is that this work of sanctification is not a small thing. This is not an insignificant thing, not something to be taken lightly. It is a work to be taken quite seriously, in fact. This journey of working towards perfection, as uh, our founder John Wesley would have said. <coughs> and so he is trying to you know, let us know that this is a big deal. This is an important work that we're a part of. And then I love what he says in verse 14. Do this, this work that we do to grow in our faith, do this without grumbling or arguing. Those of you who have children at home now or perhaps have raised children, did you ever ask them to do something, to help you with something, or perhaps to do a chore? And they did it, but they complained the whole time? Or they argued with you about it and whether it really needed to be done or should have to be done right now or whatever. At the end, they did what you asked them to do, but you didn't necessarily have a good feeling about it 
because they did it so begrudgingly, so unwillingly. I think what Paul is pointing out to us is that the heart matters as much as the work itself. If we serve Christ, but the whole while are resisting or resenting the work, it doesn't have the same meaning to God. Or if we are doing what's right, if we are living in a way that is righteous, but we're doing it out of a sense of legalism or of obligation, it really doesn't have the same meaning to Christ. Or if, for example, we are generous with what God has given us, but we do it out of a sense of obligation because we feel like we have to or supposed to, it loses some of its meaning. This is why Paul says to the Corinthians, God loves a cheerful giver. Our faith life is not just about what we do. It's about the heart with which we do it. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for Paul's important teaching here that reminds us that as we work on our salvation, as we work out our salvation. Obviously, we're, we're saved, Lord, by your grace, but then we continue this process of sanctification, of becoming more and more like Christ, seeking to live a righteous life. As we do that, help us to do it not just out of legalism, not just out of a sense of rule or obligation, but help us to do it in a way, Lord, that is of the heart, Lord, a way that reflects a desire within us, a love within us, Lord. Not, not because we feel like we have to, but because we genuinely want to. Help us to learn from this passage, Lord, that it's not just what we do in the pursuit of our faith, but it is the heart with which we do it. Lord, I thank you and praise you for this important teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.